<clears throat> okay, testing one, two, three, four, five. Let's see, I need to move <clears throat> this video over to there, I think. And I need to move this over to there. Minimize that. Move this over to there. <clears throat> I want my video to, uh, or my image, <clears throat> to sort of look like I'm looking at the screen or looking what you're seeing. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, I guess this is going to look okay. I <clears throat> just made a little test, which you saw. Um, World Health Organization has declared coronavirus a pandemic. Uh, I think it's mainly Democratic. Uh, yeah, right here. <clears throat> Schumer and others are asking Trump to issue a national emergency declaration. Uh, anyway, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is Wednesday, March 11th. It's uh, 12.40 p.m. local time. I think they said the weather was going to hit 82 today. Uh, for the last day or so, I've been running... Uh, Chrome, my Chrome box, playing with it, and with that uh, hub, with it, playing around with, with it. Then uh, just a few hours ago, I've hooked my PC back up, which I'm running uh, <coughs> dual boot, uh, Zorin Studio, and... Ubuntu Studio, but this is, uh, as you can see, that little Z up there in the corner. This is Zorin. Uh, like I said, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas, and in this county, <clears throat> we've, I guess, uh, had the first case of uh, the coronavirus. Actually, it's, well, I guess it takes six hours or longer to get the test done, and everything indicates that it is but they say presumptive case. Uh, as I have told you, if you watch my videos many times, I spent 30 years working hospital security. I'm very glad I'm not working uh, at a hospital. Uh, also, something that I've mentioned a few times, I mean, it's not uh, actually it's something I like to think about or I'm sure not bragging about it or whatever. And uh, when the Hong Kong flu came through, there was two years, and it must, I'm guessing a little bit, it must have been about, let's see. Okay, I wasn't working hospital security. Uh, I'm thinking early 70s when the Hong Kong, I could, I could do a Wikipedia. But anyway, the, it came through. And I got it. And I have a thing about vomiting. I have a thing about choking. I have a thing about... Uh, and so when it came through, I got it. And my, at that time, wife, now my ex-wife, you know, she got it at the same time. And when she felt like she had to vomit and whatever, she just, you know, vomited. I mean, she just like willed herself to vomit and whatever and then she felt better I subconsciously or you know I couldn't control it I tried to keep from vomiting and then I it got caught in my covering my airway or whatever and I was actually walking around the room you know thinking I was going to not be able to breathe and die and then the next year the Hong Kong flu or a 
variation of it came through again, and then, of course, I was really worried. And, of course, the same thing happened, except a little bit worse. Okay, I have not vomited since the 1970s, but I've been sick a few times, and I have laid in bed all night long, you know, with a uh, cold compress on my head, everything, just, you know, praying, please, please don't let me vomit. So, uh, I don't want to get the flu. I mean, nobody wants to get this, but I, I especially don't want to get it. Uh, uh, Trump has messed, you know, President Trump has messed this up. His administration has messed this up. You know, one, we can't believe anything that Donald Trump says. And then he has this thing of the stupid things that he says. The fact that he tells different things each day. And, you know, right now he's worried about the stock, stock market. And he thinks this is, a, I think, a conspiracy to... Uh, uh, so he won't get reelected or something. It's just you know, it's at it, 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 it times like this. This is why we don't want him as president. At times like this, you need you know a president who you can trust and who you believe what he tells you, and then you also need a president that is thinking about you and the country, you know, rather than himself, and. Uh, so, and you know, what he should have done, and of course, he appointed uh, Vice President Pence to be in charge, of course, and he, uh, there's there's video, news clips or whatever of all of them together, and they're all, you know, nobody knows who's in charge, and everybody has to kowtow, you know, kowtow to the, to the president or whatever, and uh, you know, what he needed to step in is to be honest, 100% honest, so we know, you know. But at this point, I would not believe anything that Trump or any of his or that the administration says. But what he should have done is stepped in, you know, and said, you know, here's who's in charge, you know, or going to be my key person or whatever. And... uh It should be a science, you know, head of the CDC or, well, I don't know who, you know, I'm not sure how it works in that, in the ranking or whatever, but it should be, though. And then he should just be out of the situation, but he can't. I can show you some clips, like from the other day, where he's talking about his, how about he knows all about medicine. And uh, he, it's the same thing that he always does, he uses that thing of, uh, people come up to me and they tell me, blah, blah, you know, it turns out <clears throat> nobody comes up to him and says the things that he says that they say. People, sometimes he even named the people. And then news media go and ask the people, did you, and no, he didn't, you know, never talked to the man, you know. And this thing he says, you know, the doctors here, they came up to me, you know, he's talking to the, you know, they're lined up there, you know. They said that, they were how how do I know so much about medicine? It's just amazing. Well, you know, he doesn't know anything about it. He didn't know that people died from the flu, and his father or grandfather, I think it is, they said died from the flu. I mean, it's just on and on. Uh, stock market's sure not doing good, and it's understandable. And then, of course, he he wants to do it whatever it takes to make sure the stock market does well without, you know, you know, he, there again, you, you know, he should step out of it. I mean, get the experts together, have them come in, you know, with their information. Uh, you know, what is the best, how do we handle this the best way? Do we do something for the, you know, the hotels or the airlines or, uh, workers or you know but not just make a decision what it would say something they think is going to help the stock market he needs to study have people present information and you know so he's just throwing everything like it you know at a fan or whatever to see what's or the wall 
to see what sticks, to see what, you know. Okay, if I say we're going to do such and such, cut taxes, you know, that'll work, you know. Well, no, I mean, you have to figure out what's going to, you know, what's best. <clears throat> but, man, my, my wife and I, when we were married, we had a tropical fish shop for four years. It's difficult being a small business person. Also, for a year, we had a uh, security service, patrol service or whatever. And uh, and that was back. I started that back when uh, security wasn't the big thing that it is now. Back then, there was like, in the Yellow Pages, five or six security companies. Burns, Pinkerton, Wells Fargo, uh, Wackenhut maybe. That was about it. Maybe a little, another little, whatever. And I, and the reason I started the patrol service was when we had the tropical fish shop. We could just see after four years we tried every, you know, tried things. First year, you know, we were doing a lot of business, and then when summertime came, no business, and nobody wanted to buy tropical fish, you know, in the summertime. And uh, so then we got in. Uh, pond supplies, uh, water hyacinth, that type of stuff. People didn't know we had it. And, you know, for for the summer, you know, we, you know, we got it in. And then the next year we got in uh, parakeets and, uh, or I forget, maybe that year we got in pet supplies, collar, dog and cat collars and that type of stuff. And then I think we got in parakeets and some... Uh, the big parrots, you know, got in those. And, you know, nothing really worked. So after, I could see that it was, you know, we'd, I told the wife, you know, okay, if, if our, but it was always over the summer, you know. In the winter, we were doing really good. Summer, we couldn't sell anything. Um, and maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I should have gone back to welding uh, during the summertime and, just hired some young teenager or something or other to, you know, work. I don't know. Maybe I, but anyway. But anyway, so I could see by the numbers. We, we had, because we made a decision if business doesn't improve by X amount. So I uh, started selling. Um, that was fun, actually. Started selling printing, printing material. And there was companies then. I don't know. I don't see any of those. Well, I don't see any magazines anymore. There were magazines that were on the newsstand, like how to make, you know, how to uh, and be an in, uh, start your own business or whatever. And w- there was a bunch of ads in it for several different companies sell printing, you know, to businesses. And so you sent for a catalog, and it was like this big. The catalog came. And it showed all the samples that the fonts and the the colors and all that type of stuff were shown in the catalog. And it was kind of strange uh, because, like, <clears throat> you know, I went out and made a bunch of sales, small sales. And so I would get in the mail, sort of like a Steinfeld episode uh, where Steinfeld's getting checks for a dollar or something, you know, something like that. Um, when you sold, when you made a sale, you got, so I'd go to the mail, our mailbox, and there'd be like 10 envelopes from the company, each one with a little tiny check for, I don't know how much it was, not very much, because of like 500 cards or whatever, you know, business cards, and of course there was envelopes and other things, and I didn't think that I could sell. Oh, well, the reason, yeah, that I, okay, I was, yeah, well, that's it, yeah. Um, I started, you know, going to businesses and selling them the, the, uh, you know, the, the stuff, and I'd go and there'd be plywood on their door, and I say, "What happened? Somebody broke in last night." I go someplace else. Uh, we got robbed, or what, you know, whatever. And I thought, hmm. Maybe, but of course I enjoyed the, the uh, what I would do is I'd, you know, I had my catalog and I'd show them this stuff. 
Well, then when they ordered, I'd make sure I went back to make sure they got their order. And I would get one of their business cards. And then I would rubber cement it over the appropriate place with the right the same kind of whatever. So before long, I'd go into some. And also, I was calling on small local but I didn't have the courage to, uh, you know, go to some major corporation and go to their purchasing department and go in there, you know, with a, I did, I've never owned, I've never owned a suit in my life, sport coats, yes, I've never owned a suit in my life, but anyway, uh, I just didn't have the, the, the guts to go in and try to make that, but I'd just go to the small business people, so, but anyway, then I had my uh, catalog, and I would be showing them, and they'd, oh, oh, yeah, Smith Secretarial Service, oh, Joe's Barbecue. Oh, and they'd see all the local businesses. They, they knew I was, you know, so that helped. But the problem was I'd call on these small businesses and usually mom and pop operation like our tropical fish shop was. And I'd go in and uh, they'd say, yeah, we need some business cards and we'll need some envelopes, uh, something like that. And then a customer would come in. So I'd say, well, go ahead and take care of the customer, you know. So then they'd, they'd do that. Then they'd come over and they'd be pick out the color and then, Another customer would come in, and I'd say, go ahead and take care of, you know. So I might make, uh, you know, I might be there for an hour and make $2.60 or something, you know. And it just wasn't enough. So then I went to work for, uh, I thought, hmm, security. So I went to work for a security company. And then, that's then. You know, then I end up end up working eventually, thirty years hospital security. In the very beginning, I worked contract security, part time, and hospital security for thirty years. But for the for years, I always worked uh, uh, contract security, which minimum wage just about, maybe a little above the minimum wage. <clears throat> but uh, one year we saved. Pinkerton. One year I worked one year for Pinkerton. And we saved every, all that money. And we then drove to uh, Mexico for a vacation. And it wasn't just driving to Mexico and crossing the border, which you can do with, well, you could, I don't know about now. But then you could just go down, cross, you know, cross the border, go across. And, uh, but when you went, going to be there longer. Or if you're going to go through the interior, then you needed a uh, permit on your sticker on your car or something. So we got the sticker, and then we drove across the border. Let's see. Across from... Is it El Paso? Oh. Well, anyway, then we drove. And then we drove to... Okay, now my mind is going. Well, I know we stayed overnight at Durango in a hotel. And then we ended up going to Mazatlan, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing wrong, because when we left Durango and when we were heading, we knew you, you couldn't get lost, really, you know. <clears throat> but when we were driving to Mazatlan, you know, we were close, and it was like the it was the next main, you know, thing, and so, you know, we stopped for gas or something like that, and we'd say, uh, you know, Mazatlan. And they'd, they'd like, you know, uh, what are you saying, you know? Because, I mean, you would think you would know, okay, the next big town is, you know, and these people are just, but they didn't, you know. So then we spent overnight at uh, Mazatlan. And so then we just decided, let's get out of Mexico I uh, have no desire to travel outside the United States ever. I just want to stay here where there's Taco Bells and uh, Pizza Hut and that type of stuff. And no more. I heard, well, of course, if we'd have had money, you know, maybe. But, you know, it was like, that's it. I'm not leaving. Uh, I'll tell you if I haven't already, you know, about our. But anyway, when OK, and we did not drink the water, by the way. But we did uh, get watermelon uh, during the trip, you know, and cut it, 
whatever. And that I think that's how we got sick. And so it was me, my pregnant wife, and our two little kids. And we all had, we were leaving. You know, we pull up to the border. So we were not going back the same way we came, of course. Going out through, well, okay. And we needed to get to the bathroom really bad. So anyway, we pull up. And the United States uh, Border Patrol said, do you have anything to declare? And uh, I said, no. And we didn't. I think we bought almost nothing. I think we had a chess set and a couple dolls or something. And that was it. I mean, we bought food and stuff, but... And anyway, they, what's that? And I said, well, that's, you know, you know a, a doll for my, uh, you know, my kids here. And uh, he said, I asked you if you had anything to declare. And I said, well, officer, I'm sorry. I thought that you have to have something more than a $150. No, when I ask you if you have something, you know. And I, I'm, oh, I'm sorry, officer. I didn't know and everything. And then I said, uh, but could you tell us where is the closest restroom? And we need it right away. And he said, go ahead. <laughs> so we drove on in. So, oh, so that's, why did I get signed? That was, was there a reason for that? Anyway, we talked about the, uh, well, let's go here, by the way. I'll put the links, by the way, for this. Here is the CDC site and uh, you know believe me by the way hand washing is the number one thing I spent uh, 30 years working hospital security at least 10 of those years working at a small hospital and I <clears throat> had been uh, went through training to be an EMT and got certified by the state I was also a CPR instructor it was a small hospital, and I helped out in the emergency room a lot, you know, when they were busy. And I was, in that 10 years, I was sick one time, sick enough that I went to a doctor. And uh, then later when I ended up, uh, you know, quitting, well, I thought I quit hospital security, but, well, in 2000, I quit. In 2000, I worked the 2000 census in Missouri. Then I went to Orlando, Florida, and I worked uh, contract security there, and I was in charge of a hospital security program or whatever. It was horrible. Horrible. Um, it was a for-pay hospital. What is it? HCA or whatever that is. Criminal organization, really. Uh, then I, you know, came to Texas and I worked, it was after 9-11, so I worked contract security at, uh, Love Field Control Tower, and then I worked, uh, at, uh, Addison F Field Control Tower security. Then I ended up, uh, going to Miami, Florida, and I worked. In the beginning, I worked at a shopping mall for a year, and I was sick the entire year. One sickness after the other. Just about everybody that I worked with was uh, Hispanic. And I guess uh, I would come to work, and every one, of the, every one of the people who was already working would shake hands with me. Then when they, uh, and then all the guys that came in to work, you know, with us, you know, would shake hands when they got there. And then when the guys who were coming in to relieve us eight hours later, when they showed up, they would shake hands with us. And all of those guys, and well, there was a female or two, at least once a year, and, and I think more than that, they were leaving the country and going and seeing their relatives in Nicaragua or uh, uh, 
Puerto Rico or whatever, and every time they came back from being gone a week or two or whatever it was, they came back sick. And we, every, every one of us had it. So wash your hands. And I would say, uh, don't shake hands anymore. But I know that's, you know, what are you going to do? You know, uh, when, when I, I go to my, uh, my doctors, you know, the general practitioner, she shakes, maybe she won't anymore. She, she has three kids now, two little ones. You know, she shakes my hands. When uh, I go to see my heart doctor once a year, he comes in and shakes my hands. Or whatever. I think we need to stop shaking hands. But believe me, washing hands is, is uh, you know. So anyway, I hope you all do not get. Anyway, I'll put a link to this. Uh, don't listen to our president. Uh, listen to the medical people. And check out and get your information from the CDC, and uh, I guess maybe also check out this. I'll put the link for this. The World Health Organization. Uh, let's see. Um, stock market's not doing good today. Uh, like I said, I uh, hooked up my Chrome box and used it for a day or so, trying out different things, and I wrote down what I, different things that I tried out. Let me do speed test again because uh, speed, let's see, because <clears throat> I was hooking things up different, uh, different ways, you know, like the monitor. I have a 4K monitor, but I was hooking it up uh, using a display port. I was hooking it up using um, HDMI, and I was hooking it up display port, different, trying different, you know, trying different things. And then I was also checking, you know, on like the uh, uh, you know, display or the uh, speed or whatever. By the way, I'm I'm getting really. Uh, I'm using right now. I have this set in 4K mode. As you know, if you heard, watched this video in the past, my problem has been when I have two monitors side by side, and if one is 4K and the other is well, going to be 1080, I don't have two 4K monitors. That I have never figured out. You know, dragging stuff back and forth and how to get the. And believe me, I've looked up everything online and YouTube videos and whatever. It just does not work for me. But, so I've got, uh, so I'm watching, I have 4K capability now, but right now I'm using the, uh, what, uh, what did I decide on that was working best for me? Uh, excuse me for a second. Okay, not the 3840 by 2180. Uh, using the one that's uh, 1440. What is it? Is, is it, uh, let's see, 14. It's, that one is working better for me. Well, yeah, got my notes here, but I can't find anything. Uh, but that's that's working good. <clears throat> I've been watching some of the YouTube videos of driving and, and video in 4K and also walking and like beaches. Oh, I love that because I do love when I was in Florida, I I uh I did love Florida for the, because of the beaches and that and so I've been watching uh walking video where a guy has a selfie stick and he does 4K and walks through, you know, Rome and uh, different cities and then some driving videos. And I saw a guy the other day who was just before sunrise for about an hour and a half driving in Brazil. And wow, you know, the beach is over there and 
it's uh, I saw a walking thing of Las Vegas. So I, I mentioned this a walking thing of like New York City. That was something to see, you know, St. Patrick's Cathedral and uh, the outside of Fox News and that type of stuff. That was, but the, it was it was so New York City was so crowded. I would not, you know, I've never been to New York City. Yeah, I would like to see St. Patrick's and and uh, Rockefeller Center and a few of those things. But I would not want to deal with the crowd. No way. But uh, the walking tour of Las Vegas, the guy walked. I'm not able to walk very far now. But, you know, he walked just walking in very little traffic. I mean, very very few people on the sidewalk. And he's walking and he passes a casino and he passes like four or five casinos or whatever. And the... Uh, and I'm, I'm not a, uh, I don't, I, I don't want to say I'm not a people person. I can't say I'm not, I can't say too, I'm a private person. I've been online since 1982. And I, before that, I put out publications, written, you know, mimeographed or printed and uh, did a radio program and whatever, but uh, Uh, both my parents were drinkers, alcoholics. Uh, they never beat me or abused me or unless I was, when I, when I, after I got divorced at age 40 and I started doing a whole bunch of dating for a while, I had women, you know, that said, uh, you were abused. I said, no, I wouldn't. Yes, you were abused. And, uh. I said, my parents, well, there's other ways to abuse you, you know. And I said, no, they, I wasn't abused. And uh, I said, you know, you know, life's not like leave it to Beaver and father knows best or whatever. And the, these women would say, well, that's the way our family was. And I said, you're kidding. People, that, that's the way people really, you know. Yeah. So I was alone. I mean, my parents. Father had come home, drank some, when he, before he was a, business, a union official, he'd come home, drink some beers, go to sleep. My mother would come home from work, uh, make herself a highball, start calling on the phone nonstop, make herself something to eat too, and calling on the phone nonstop. And uh, she wouldn't pass out, but then she'd go to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning or something like that. But then I had, you know, I was just there more or less alone. I didn't have company. I encourage, you know, I didn't go over, I never, uh, I never really had birthday parties. Uh, I never uh, went to other people's houses, you know, uh, didn't have company and uh, had a hobby, shortwave radio, listening all night to shortwave radio. And uh, so, uh you know, and I was an only child, but I mean, I had like 60 cousins, but I never associated with any of those 60 cousins. They'd have been happy to associate with me. They were a little bit, well, there was a two or three or four or five in my age range, but then the others were a little bit younger, you know, but uh, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Man, how am I going to uh, uh, put the tags in for this? I do not know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That's not it. This is it.